to all the attendees. So this is the second session of the eGov partner training. Uh, again, this is a product demo uh, session covering two topics that is OB pass, that is online building plan approval and uh, property tax. The sessions are handled by uh, online building platform uh, is handled by Sankar and uh, property tax is handled by nearby and all accompanying us uh, today is Abhishek Suresh as well from the product team. So warm welcome to all the panelists. And yeah, the stage is all yours. I'll stop sharing so you folks can take it up from here and uh, run us through the product, uh, some current team. Yeah, thanks, Abhishek. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, so Abhishek Shuresh will be presenting the screen now. Um, so he'll be like taking you through the uh, online building permission system application uh, process flow first, and then we'll quickly jump into the demonstration. So if you have any doubts during the flow, either you can voice out or you can type your questions on the chat. We will like answer them. Yeah, over to Abhishek Suresh. Thank you, Shankar. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, I'll share my screen. Let me know when it is visible. Abhishek, are you sharing something? Oh, yeah, he's just rejoining. I think he dropped okay. off uh, the technical glitch. Your screen is visible, Abhishek. Yeah. So uh, first, I'll start with a basic process flow diagram and walk everyone through the process flow for um, both the sides, that is from the side of architect or citizen and the employee side. <clears throat> so as an architect, first to get your building plan, to get a building plan permit. So you need to upload the plan diagram into the system and the system will validate it based on the set bylaws and they compare it and generates an output. And if it is a failure, you can you have an option to make the corrections and <clears throat> It will be uh, the failure reasons will be notified, will be mentioned in the report that is generated. And if it is success, then you can proceed to create the permit. And once you uh, have entered the permit, uh, I'll walk you through, this will be clear in the demo, but once you crea uh, create the permit, then it will be sent to the citizen and you need to get the approval from the citizen if it is okay, uh, if, the, if their standards are being met. And the citizen has an option to make request any changes <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> request any changes and uh, then send it back to the architect and if it is success from the citizen side the architect can make the payment and submit the application so this is from uh, the architect or the citizen side and from the employee side the uh, the, uh, the approval process happens in mainly four levels so one is the document verification. Second is the field inspection. Next will be a NOC verification. And finally, it will be the approval process. So once the architect submits the application, so the document verifier that is here, the clerk, so he or she can will scrutinize the document against the uploaded docu uh, documents. That is, the, he'll, he or she will scrutinize the application along with the uploaded documents. And if it is required, uh, they can also upload any documents. For example, if this uh, architect is going to the counter and uh, trying to apply at the counter, then the clerk also has an option to upload the documents at the site also. And once the documents are verified and the details have been approved, so it is sent to the field inspection. So the field inspector or the town planning overseer in this case, so he or she conducts a field inspection notes the field observation and has an option to enter 
his or her comments in the system along with any additional supporting documents and it is sent for an noc verification and at the noc verification step it is uh, this will uh, actually happen it, this uh, this can happen in three different ways which will be um, explained in the demo so the noc verifier it is up to the noc verifier to get the approval from the respective de departments based on the uh, criteria for in this case it is fire noc and it could be airport noc so get the approval from the respective departments and it is processed and finally it is sent to the approval who is an executive engineer and he or she will validate it and release the permit so this is the basic process flow diagram i'll just stop here to take any questions or um, we can go then... into the flow abhishek you can start with it is here yeah <clears throat> So in the, here, this is from the architect login. So he or she will enter the mobile number. So first, I'll just talk once. So first you need to get yourself registered as a stakeholder in the system. And uh, then, you can, then only you can actually uh, proceed to create the EDCR scrutiny. So I'm not showing that step here, but this is once you register, then you log in with your mobile number and the OTP and uh, choose the location. Here, go to the BPA card here and here select the registered architect login. <coughs> As you can see, there are three cards here. One is for the inbox, one is for the scrutiny and one is for the building plan approval. Since you are uh, trying to create a new scrutiny, so create, uh, click on plan scrutiny for new construction. Yeah, so actually what's happening here is a registered architect or a business user would be allowed to log into the application. Uh, he or she can uh, scrutinize a building permit diagram. So the diagram should be drawn in the digit DCR standards. So Digit has published a, a standard lay names and color codes in which the diagram has to be drawn and it has to be saved in the .dxf extension format, which is an open source format. If it is saved in those format with the digit dimensions and styles, so the system would be able to read the diagram and that it will be able to validate those parameters and measurements against the bylaws that is registered already in the uh, digit system, digit scrutiny engine for whichever city or state. So then the engine will process the diagram. It will validate against the bylaws and it will throw an output as a DCR report output. So against each and every parameter that is set, you will get an output, whether it is pass or fail. If it is failed or if it is passed, it will throw a reason why it is failed or passed. So depending on the reason, either the user can change the diagram or modify the diagram, correct the mistakes, re-upload the diagram and then get a desired output. Here you can see there are different services here under EDCR scrutiny, there is a service for uh, plan scrutiny for new construction. Uh, for applying for a permit, there is a diagram scrutiny. For applying for occupancy certificate also, there is a diagram scrutiny. That's why you are seeing two services there. And below is a building plan approval process. This is basic application process flow. Uh, uh, earlier in the session, Satish would have uh, showcased you about M Collect and Finance. Similarly, we have some application process flow in BPA also. So, but the whole crux of the application lies in the EDCR scrutiny where a diagram scrutiny is happening within a uh, few seconds. Yeah, you can proceed, Abhishek. You can upload the diagram and then showcase output. Yeah. So once you click on the EDCR scrutiny, you select your city and uh, enter your application name. And like Shankar mentioned, you upload the building plan diagram, which will be an AutoCAD file. And, uh, In this case, Abhishek is uploading a single floor residential building, which will get scrutinized down. Yeah. So on click on submit, what happens is system goes to city A, it gets the bylaws of city A, it extracts the parameters from the diagram, validates against the bylaws of city A, and it throws an output. Here you can see new building plan is successfully accepted. And there is a unique reference ID that got generated. Below also you can see download scrutiny report. If you download this, it will download a PDF where you can see the details of the uh, bylaws there. 
Can you open the file? Yeah. Pause. Here you can see. Yeah. Can you go to the top of the page? Can you? Yeah. So here you can see the application application details. All the information is extracted from the diagram, except the applicant name. We enter the applicant name as Shankar, but rest all information like what is the application type, what is the occupancy type, whether it is residential, commercial, or industrial, and what is the plot detail, what is the average width of the plot. If there are any declaration in the drawings, we are showing the declarations. Um, can you can you scroll down, please? So also against each and every bylaw. You'll get an output. Also, if there is any block-wise details, so if there are multiple blocks in the diagram, again, each and every block, you will find this information. In this diagram, there is only one block. That's the reason you have block one and uh, ground floor and first floor, where it contains built-up area, floor area, and carpet area. Again, so against each and every bylaw, if you see below, there is a far. So it says uh, permissible road width is like less than or equal to 1.2, provided it's 0.3. And that is the reason it is accepted. Suppose if it is more than the permissible limit, it would have shown rejected in a different color. So you can, as an architect or a business user, you can easily understand where is the problem. You can exactly go to the, that particular information in the diagram, make the corrections, and re-upload it in a real-time manner. So in this way, you can, uh, as you would have noticed, it, it had hardly took like 10 to 15 seconds to scrutinize this diagram, and then there is an output, real-time output for the business user to process on. So now with this output as reference the user will be allowed to create an application. So application service and diagram scrutiny engine service are two different services altogether, two separate APIs, where uh, two separate services where you can use them independently. So if some city wants only the EDCI scrutiny, they can very well take, take the EDCI scrutiny. And if their own application process is already present with some other vendor, they can integrate easily this EDCI scrutiny engine with that of the application. Or if they want both EDCI scrutiny engine as well as application, they can take both uh, 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 services from digit uh, OBPS. So now with this as reference, uh, Abhishek will showcase you how to create an application as an architect. Yeah, please proceed Abhishek. Yeah, so once, uh, so you, you uh, as DTCS scrutiny number is generated, so either you can note down this number and uh, go to, a new, like I showed in the previous card, from there you can proceed to create a new permit or you can directly go for creating a permit from clicking on apply for building plan permit here. So this is, <clears throat> again, I'm sure one second. Yeah, so again, you go to the uh, BPA card here and uh, you click on registered architect login. Here, as you can see, you can, uh, since it is all the, uh, one second. Sorry, it's a yeah. So here, uh, under the EDCR scrutiny, you click on the plan scrutiny for new construction, and uh, under. <coughs> So before you proceed with the application, so you will be presented with the list of all the documents you need to be ready with to upload. And uh, you need to have identity proof, address proof, and all the documents related to the building. Yeah, this list is completely configurable based on the city and state needs. This is a default configuration and uh, digit. Yeah, click on next also. So now uh, the user can search using a EDCS scrutiny success number, which we generated in the previous step. So once we click on search, you can see all the details are getting extracted from the diagram. So please pause. So, uh, so whatever information is extracted from the diagram, those information cannot be modified by the user to save the sanctity of the application. So wherever the information, more information is needed over and above what is present in the diagram, those information can be requested from the user using this application flow. 
So here, you, here the user is asking, user has been asked for holding number and land registration details, which was not part of the uh, EDGS scrutiny. So then the application contains the owner and document information. Then it contains the NOC details as well as a summary. So uh, owner and document details will, um, so as a stakeholder, as a business user, uh, I need to update, uh, please, please play the video. I need to uh, uh, give the information of the property owner. So I'm uploading the property owner information based on the diagram information variable that is present in the diagram. Yeah, as you can see the proposed building abstract, all this information is extracted from the EDZ diagram output. So then we talk about the location details of the property where, where the actual construction is going to happen. Either I can use a JS map location to get the pro, uh, location detail, or I can use pin code city area locality to get the property uh, location details. These are all the common uh, address and property info which is present in digit. So which the, the, the reusable component it can be used in um, property tags, it can be used in trade license, it can be used in OB pass. It's a common location component. Even the owner information is a common component. Uh, so if, if you want owner info of property, if you want owner info of the applicant, if you want owner info of the tradee, uh, we can use this common owner component to get the owner information, to update the owner information. Yeah, we ask for mobile number, name, gender, which is like minimistic information. If you want more information, that also can be configured in the owner detail. Please play. So when you enter the mobile number, it's already fetching the details, which was already there in the system. If it is not there, so you have an option to uh, enter the details and it will be automatically created internally in the system. So here you can upload the documents. So for the sake of the uh, time limit, so we are only uploading the ones which are marked as asterisk, which are mandatory. Yeah, so uh, as you can see the application, so in case you are, um, uh, you close the window or the applic application, so you can come back to the, my applications as a citizen or an architect, and you can view the application there and again pro process the application. So in case you close the window, you can you have always have an option to resume it. <clears throat> yeah, since those applications are like really huge, it is, if some information is lost, it is like really difficult for the user to re-enter it again. That's the reason you have this intermediate save, which just helps the user um, to resume the application very, very uh, closes the window. Yeah. Yeah. So you can either proceed to upload the fire NOC or the NOC details here, or you have an, you have an option to do it at a later stage and uh, click on next. Yeah, based on the variables that is present in the diagram, the system automatically identifies what are all the NOCs that are required for this particular application. So based on that, it is listing that for this particular application, you need Airport Authority of India NOC as well as Fire NOC. So that's the reason one application is getting forked into three different applications. One application number for the building permit application, one application number for the Fire NOC, as you can see, uh, unique reference ID is there and one application number for the uh, Airport Authority of India. So the advantage is that we are not repeatedly going back to the end user asking for information, where one application here is getting forked into three, to three different departments. So that's the advantage here. Yeah, please proceed. <laughs> So this is the final step where you can review all of the details furnished along with the documents which you uploaded.
once it is reviewed so you once you submit it so it will again like i mentioned before so it will go back to the citizen approval so here the workflow component is like completely configurable so from our um, uh, knowledge on the ground or learnings from the ground we have configured this particular workflow in this particular manner where a business user is creating an application on behalf of a citizen so we made it a mandate that business user get get it approved from the citizen sending the application to the citizen asking him to review or her to review so that the responsibility lies with the citizen the citizen will review the application uh, he or she can give some inputs feedback to the architect to make some corrections or they can simply approve saying that everything in the application is well and good you can please go ahead and submit so that's the reason this flow is present from here it goes to the citizen where citizen can open provide their comments and again it will come back to the architect who can submit the application on the citizen behalf after making the payment yeah you can move on to the citizen flow yeah So once the architect submits the application, the citizen will receive an SMS and an email uh, notification uh, that the application has been created with this particular application number, and the citizen can log in with their mobile number if it is registered and uh, use the OTP you receive. And in the My Applications card, you can see all of the applications which were created with your as the owner. And here, if you click on View Details. <clears throat> you can see all of the information that was furnished by the architect and you can view the uploaded diagram as well as the scrutiny report which was generated by the system So you have two options here. So one is in case uh, if there is no other clarification required, you can approve the application. Other is that if the, if you need any uh, any more clarifications or any uh, corrections required from the architect, you can send it to the architect, and he or she can the architect can uh, review the application again, and again send it to the citizen for approval. So here uh, for the sake of demo, I'm clicking approve, and you can also enter any additional comments that you want. and also attach any supporting documents <clears throat> so the application has been approved successfully now the application in the system in this uh, the architect needs to submit the application to the system so for that i need to log in with the application uh, the architect login yeah so the same process again uh, you click on registered architect login enter the mobile number with which you are registered enter the otp yeah so here in the inbox click on the obps inbox so he can see that uh, the application number along with the other data basic details as well as the status as stakeholder submission pending <clears throat> so if you click on the card it will take you to the detail application page whether in case uh, the citizen has asked for any additional comments or review so you can do that here otherwise you can agree to the terms and condition and uh, apply yeah so once it is applied you can uh, see now as you can see in the application timeline that is it is pending for the fee payment and uh, you can either make the payment right now or it can be done later by the citizen and or you can either done at the counter also so i am right now i am doing it showing the payment that is being done by the architect
So you, once you select the payment mode, uh, so it will take you to the payment gateway. You enter your details and uh, proceed. Yeah, so the payment has been completed and you can see the receipt number and you can also download the receipt or you can and you can also permit download the permit order in this case because it has been a low risk application for which you can download the permit i mean you can you will get the permit and you can start the construction but it will be anyway processed by the employee So this is the application payment receipt. Yeah, there are different risk types, low risk, medium risk, and high risk. Here, we classify the risk based on the height of the building. So in certain clients, they have requested if the risk type is low. Um, so they are allowing the citizen to uh, start the construction. It is like a trust and verify mode, where you give the permit initially just by applying and making a nominal fee. Suppose that the application will be processed by the employee. If there are any deviation, they will be uh, penalized or certain actions will be taken. But but the point is like 90% of the application is like low risk application and they don't see a conflict of interest uh, during the application process. But that's the reason it has been allowed. It's a workflow configuration. If your city official doesn't need this uh, kind of uh, trust and verify, you can very, you can very well generate the permit order only after processing of the application. Yeah, please go ahead. So next is the, uh, so the, up till now, so the architect has submitted the application. So now it will, will be going to the employee side flow. So like I mentioned before, so there are, there are four different levels. So one is the document verification. Second, it is the field inspection. And uh, third is the NOC verification. And finally, it is the building plan permit approval. So here, you will be for this is the first stage where you log in as the document verifier to verify your credentials. Select the city in which you are operating, and so uh, basically it goes to a clerk in the office uh, where the first level scrutiny is happening. Uh, the function of a clerk is to like validate the application correctness and complete completeness of it, and also verify the document that is tagged along with the application. So here in most cases uh, uh, in our cities where uh, the citizen is uh, like asked to come with the physical documents because it contains some legal obligations, they will verify the physical documents along with the document which is uploaded online. And if there are any doc additional document that needs to be uploaded, he can very well give it to the employee, ask him to upload, ask her or her to upload. If the, it is not required, the a document, the clerk can take necessary actions. The action is like either the clerk can say the documents or everything is in order, forward to the next level user or he can send it back to the citizen asking for more information or he can simply reject the application citing the reasons for rejection yeah please go ahead yeah so like shankar mentioned so when the citizen or the stakeholder comes to the counter to the employee so they can view the application by either entering the application number which the architect will be having when they received while submitting the application or they can enter the mobile number here uh, and search or that, or either you can use any of the filters here based on the permit service type, locality, and the permit conditions. So I will show both the options. So once you, this is the registered architect number, so all the applications which was submitted by the applicant will be shown here. And from here, you can proceed. Or either here on the left side, you can see, you can enter the, any of the filters. And uh, as you can see, there are five low risk applications pending for document verification and here you click on the application number so these are the two different ways i mean uh, three different ways where we can actually view the application now click on the application number this is <coughs> here you can as a document verifier you can see all of the de details which are furnished by the um, architect and you can also view the permit order which was released along with the uploaded diagrams here scrutiny report
we can verify the documents here, like your uh, ID proofs and your address proof and the other building approval documents. So in the timeline, you can see it, uh, it is now it is pending with the for the document verification. So in the take action, so either you can send it back to the citizen if there are any details that it needs to be uh, corrected. You can revocate the permit because in case of a law risk permit, the permit has already been issued. So you can revocate the permit if you are if any of the terms and conditions were found to be violating. And you can if everything is okay, you can forward the application. So it will go to the field inspection while forwarding the application again you also have an option to enter any comments and supporting documents and also you can assign it to any particular specific employee or it will, you can skip that and it will anyway will reflect in the field inspector credentials So the application has been forwarded for field inspection. Now I'll be logging out and logging in with the field inspector credentials. <coughs> Here again, you can you go to the OBPS inbox. Like the like I mentioned before, again you can do the same steps as before to view any particular specific application, or you can all the application you can select one from the applications listed here. We click on the application and here you can enter the uh, as a field inspector when you are visiting the field so you need to enter the inspection date as well as the time of your field visit and also there is a checklist of uh, all the parameters that you need to enter uh, which you need to make a note of file during your field inspection such as if there is any leak lakes or trees on the side so these are just a basic drop down of yes or no and also if you need any other comments there is an option to Add in the remarks. <clears throat> also, you can uh, upload the field inspection report, which you'll be making, and also the site images, which you observe on the location. Yeah, so you can also add another field inspection report in case it is being uh, done on a second day. And uh, you can again like uh, you can view the documents as well as the same things apply here also, you can revocate the application, you can send it back to citizen as well as you can finally, if everything is okay, you can forward the application for the NOC verification. Now you log out. Yeah, just a second, Abhishek. we'll pause here. If there are any questions we can take, because it's kind of a monopoly. Yeah, all right, we'll go to the next step. Yeah, so uh, like Shankar mentioned, so the same application is being forked into three different <clears throat> applications one is for fire noc one is for the airport noc and one is for the <clears throat> document for the application itself so this can have the noc verification can happen in three different ways one is a direct api to api uh, call uh, second is by uh, that the completely manual that the noc verifier has to uh, download the has to process complete everything manually he or she has to uh, send it via postal to the respective departments and get an output from there, the department, whether it has been uh, approved or rejected, and then again, upload it back into the system. So this is a complete new manual process. And the last one is that the, we will give the credentials to their respective department. That is, they also have, will ha have a digit credentials through which they log into the system. They can view the application. They can download the respective documents and process it within the department and get an output from the department. And once that, that output, they can upload it back to the system 
and submit it. So the NOC verifier can view that uh, that output within the digit. So the third option will be I'll be showing here for the sake of demo. So <clears throat> this is the credentials which was given to the fire NOC department. So he or she is logging with that credentials in the inbox folder. You can see all the applications you have received. You can apply any filters required. <clears throat> if you have noticed, you might have noticed that that application number was this one, 651. So you click on that. <clears throat> you can again see the start. Uh, up, you can upload the file, which so actually uh, there is an option to view the uh, documents which were approved. And uh, once that has been approved within your department, process within your department, then that output you can upload it here and submit it. Like I shown before, you always have an option to enter any comments and any supporting documents. So this will be again reflected back into the next approval flow. So this will be uh, the NOC verifier can see these comments and the additional documents attached. So next is the NOC verifier. <coughs> so you log in with the NOC verifier credentials. And in the inbox, you can see that, sorry, you can see that NOC verification is pending in the status. So this is our application number. So you can see uh, the NOC has been, the file has been uploaded here by the fire NOC department, fire department. And you can view the file and verify the document. And uh, any, like I mentioned the third step, the airport NOC one. So assume that this uh, NOC verifier is processing it manually. So he got it approved manually and he or she is uploading it here. So this is the second step, which I mentioned. And you finally forward it. If everything is okay, you finally forward it for the approval. <coughs> so the application has been forwarded for the permit approval. And finally, the executive engineer, so they, he or she will log in with the credentials as an approver. And in the OBPS card, you click on the OBPS inbox and view the application number. So you can see it has been pending for approval. So you can see all of the details that has been furnished so far along with the documents which were uploaded, along with the also the NOC details. So everything, so everything up till this point, you can view here. And uh, <clears throat> in the end, you have any uh, permit conditions that is already uh, embedded in the system. So you can select any of them which is applicable. Also, you have an option to add any of the any of the customized permit conditions also, which is required as per this building plan. So this will be reflected in the final permit order. Once it is done, you click on approve and the permit has been approved successful. Yeah. So I'll pause here. So if, if, uh, if there are any questions, we can take it. The flow is ended actually. So we started with the registered business user who can do the diagram scrutiny. From diagram scrutiny, it went to the citizen. After application submit, it went for document scrutiny, field inspection, energy verification, and approval. And finally, permit order is like issued to the citizen. So with this, we complete the flow of permit application and OBPS. So similarly, we have different services like occupancy certificate, where respect to air, <coughs> and 
permit application, you generate an occupant certificate. Even there, you have the similar kind of process where initially you start with the diagram scrutiny, then it goes to the application. And after post the application process, you generate an occupant certificate for the constructed building. So this is the pro uh, process flow for online building permission system. If there are any doubts and clarification, you can take now. Over to you, Abhishek, Abhishek Prasad. Okay, so that <clears throat> brings us to the end of the session on uh, online building plan approval. Uh, any question from the attendees? I had a one question, uh, Sankar. Uh, so, uh, in, like you mentioned, we have fire NOC and the other NOCs. I mean, how easy is it for us to create any new uh, compliance as such? It becomes very easy with the application or how is it managed? Uh, you're asking about create one more NOC. Uh, yes, that's it. Like you have NOC. Oh, yeah, it's a configuration, Vishay. Uh, uh, where you can configure n number of NOC departments. From our experience, it's around 30 to 35 okay. uh, NOC departments are present for this particular process. Mm -hmm. uh, in the configuration parameter, you just need to add one more NOC as and when it is coming up. So once you uh, also in the uh, once you define the NOC, you need to again put one more configuration, whether it is manual or it is in APA to APA uh, call or it is like uh, where you give a login to the user to log in the system and then process. So all these are like handled in the configuration. Once you update both this configuration, it will pop up in the application. Okay, perfect, perfect. Also, in the EDCR, you need to specify for this particular variable, this particular NOC is required if the value is like violating these norms. So if you add those things in the EDCR engine, it will populate in both EDCR as well as the application flow. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Super, thank you. Thank you so much, Sankar, for clarifying that. Yeah. Okay, looks like there are no questions on for this topic. Looks like it was a very detailed uh, demonstration. So if it's fine, we can take a five minute break or we can quickly move to the next module. Okay, there is one question by Mr. Akshit Rao. A single implementation can serve multiple ULBs. Can a single implementation serve multiple ULBs? Yeah, it's in Punjab. Okay, and the next question is, can you list some states or ULBs where, okay, this is being done in Punjab. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is live in Punjab as we speak. Perfect, so I think those are the questions. So cool, then I think we can move to the next session itself because it's a Friday evening. Maybe if the demo gets done early, everybody can uh, go home for their weekend early as well. So we could move to the next uh, session, Sankar, which is uh, property tax. It's, it's, it's nearby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Abhishek. Yeah, thanks, Sankar, for giving a wonderful presentation on VPS. So, uh, let me share my screen. I'm audible, guys? Yes, you are audible. Okay. Thank you. And for the attendees, I'm guessing he's audible as well. Okay, you can start, Nidbhai. So you can okay. Stay with that as well. My screen is visible. Yes, uh, nearby. Your screen is visible to me. Okay. Anybody from the attendees, if they can confirm the same, it will be helpful. It's visible to me as well. Okay, yes. Everybody can see our screen. So let's start. Uh, uh, on property tax, let's start with some uh, uh, background on some good domain knowledge. Uh, I think <clears throat> uh, it is related to urban and in urban we know most of the time we are the municipalities are municipal corporations, we are calling them as a ULB. So ULB stand for urban local body. I think we all, mostly we all know. And <clears throat> these um, ULBs, they have some uh, obligatory functions 
like water supply to the domestic uh, the residency to industrial to commercial purposes and uh, public health sanitation urban forestry preventive health care provisioning for the urban amenities and the facilities such as parks garden playgrounds street lighting and many other functions okay so basically they <clears throat> need fund to carry out all these functions and they they basically they got the uh, sometimes they got the uh, uh, the fund from the central government from the state government and they uh, they raise the fund from the taxes as well uh, who they which they are imposed on the on the properties uh, in the ulb okay so what is a property in, the, in that case means how 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 the property is defined so property basically a, a building or open plot which is within the ulb limit and that is used either for the residential purpose or non or for the non residential purpose okay so both building as well as open plot considered as a property why you will be slave property taxes as we know that to to perform their obligatory functions uh, it is basically the property tax is the main source of revenue for them for the well bees okay and whether we should pay uh, yes we should pay and we should pay on time and now come to property property tax digit property tax system so what digit property tax system do so basically it, it helps to ulbs as well as to the citizens okay so to ulbs to manage the process process in the sense means to uh, collect the data related to a property and then assess them to a property tax so that so that their their method uh, they have transparent in their processes and in the collection of the taxes as well okay and uh, it has to the property owners by enabling them to apply for the services apply for the services such as uh, the ass assessment of the property tax so it is basically it is the liability of the owner of the house or, or of the building to get his property or her property assessed uh, in the municipal record and pay the tax okay so those services he can avail from uh, through this digital property tax system and pay the taxes online uh, from the comfort of his home means through card to net banking or any other means other digital means okay so <clears throat> what is the objective of the property tax so first of all to prepare a digital registry of properties so if you see the properties are kind of uh, main data set for the municipalities okay so on top of the properties they they means they asset they perform uh, many others uh, activities and then to maintain the transparency into the process as i said earlier increase the increase in the property tax revenue collection what are the ways in digit the property tax can be accessed so whatsapp chatbot it is already implemented in punjab so it is being used as of now it is being used for the bill payments so property tax assessment and then bill payments web applications uh, that is available for both for the citizen as well as the employees and the mobile application which is uh, also available for the both citizen as well as the employees then who all are the key stakeholders and what are their actions so basically there are two key stakeholders in property tax one is citizen and another one is employee so if you see for the citizen he can apply for a registration of a property he can apply for the updation of the property or we can say uh, any alteration is there in the property due to new construction or due to the uses of the property so for that also he can apply and apply for the mutation of the property so mutation is uh, what we can say in other word is 
transfer of title. So if, if a property is transferred from one owner to another owner, so that is uh, to means that also to be get it done in the municipal record. So it is the uh, owner's responsibility to inform to the ULP that this property has been uh, transferred. Now please change change the title of the property. And then your property tax and a tracking of those applications and the view the property details, bills and all those things. For the employee side, all these three uh, actions like apply for the property tax, property registration on the behalf of citizen, apply for the property updation, apply for the property mutation on the behalf of the citizen, and then the process of the property registration and the assessment, demand generation, billing, and the collection of the property tax. And what is the flow? Suppose your property is getting registered. So the flow is very simple for the property tax. You start with the citizen or the by the employee counter employee on the behalf of the citizen. So the application is basically created and submitted. Once it is submitted, it goes to the uh, document verifier who, who is the employee. And uh, the employee, mostly the revenue clerk in the revenue department of the ULP. And so his main role is to verify all the documents which are attached with the application and then forward that uh, application to the uh, next uh, user in the next employee in the ULB, who is basically the revenue inspector. And <clears throat> his, his role is to uh, perform a field visit and then attach a field visit verification report. And then again, he can, uh, he will forward it to the, uh, the final employee who is the appro approver of the uh, application and mostly is the tax superintendent or maybe assistant municipal commissioner in the role of uh, taking care of the revenue department's responsibilities. Okay, so in <coughs> uh, it is the forward flow uh, and if, if it is found that the application is not perfect or there is any document which is missing, the application has been sent back to the previous uh, employee. So then, then ultimate to the, uh, ultimately to the citizen to uh, attach the document which are required or to make the correction in the application. Even and uh, one more option is available to reject the application. So field inspector after field visit, if feel that the application is not correct itself, it's not genuine, so he can reject the application as well. Once it is rejected, no further action can be taken. What are the primary config configurations? Means how uh, how it has uh, the product has been configured so one masters are there so uh, a digit comes with all the standard masters data if any additional master is needed that can be configured into mdms then assessment methods so digit comes with the with the flexibility to configure the environmental value and unit area value methods and we have implemented it in Punjab, where we have environmental value, and in Uttarakhand, where we have unit area value methods. Then property tax heads. So uh, uh, the property tax is not only one head, it is basically multiple heads, which so comprises the property tax demand. So, and it varies uh, uh, across the state to states. And uh, and mostly it, it, um, it means it has it mean at least one and more than one as well. So maybe the, the property tax, which is known as property tax, which is basically the general tax and then water tax and uh, uh, conservancy. So these heads are there. And top of that, uh, additional to that, there are heads like penalty, interest, and the beds. Okay, so all these heads can be configured. So there is no limit to configuration of heads. Additional detail 
if any additional detail to the uh, to be captured as the part of property registry so whatever available in the product additional to that some more detail can be can also be kept then property tax calculation so calculator service that is completely customizable so uh, as per the need of the uh, implementation the rules to calculate the property tax as well as to calculate the interest rebate can be uh, configured so today we will go through uh, the use cases which are listed here like citizen login and then overview of the features for the further citizen then a kind of open search means without login a property a tax can be paid by the citizen then register a property update a property transfer of ownership employee search and collect through employee how to search a property and collect the property tax assess a property and then employee flow of the registered property we will not cover all the applications we will cover only one application register of property okay so we'll go through let me uh if any question uh, we have so we can pick it up either way before going into the demo okay there seems to be no questions as of now <clears throat> Okay, so I have the citizen view, uh, citizen mobile view basically opened with me. So we can see here the property tax uh, menu list where we have search and pay, my bills, create a property, my properties, my applications, transfer property ownership, or we can say mutation. So well let's let's uh, look at the search and pay so it is basically a open search and pay so i have not yet logged in if you see here uh, still login is pending so to search a property and pay that login is, without login can be performed so here once i'll click on search and pay i'll get a search property screen here i have to select a city Suppose I'm selecting a city, then I have to select a your uh, locality. So you can type the localities initials, and then you will get the list of those localities. Then I can search by uh, owner's mobile number, by unique property ID, or by the existing property ID. So suppose I'm searching by a uh, by a mobile number. Okay, and then we click on search. So it will give me the list of those properties. So view detail will take me to the build detail, view build detail screen. Here we can see the complete detail of uh, the bill which is there for the property tax demand. And the total amount due. Okay, then I can make a full payment. I can make a partial payment as well. So suppose I choose for a partial payment. So there is a uh, minimum amount to be paid that is configurable. Okay, so as of now it is configured to hundred rupees. So suppose I'm making a payment of hundred rupees. I'll proceed. We'll get a list of payment gateway or other ways like UPI or other ways, whatever. This is also completely configurable. So based on the implementations requirement or the availability they, uh, of the payment gateways and other ways, they can configure like uh, Punjab has access bank payment gateway while Uttarakhand is having ICCI bank payment gateway.
we'll select the card and we'll enter the uh, card detail. Uh, nearby, there is one question here. Yeah. Uh, this is by Mr. Emmanuel Olotu. Uh, is this the citizen doing the transaction here? Yeah, it is the citizen who is doing the transaction here. So, how does he know the unique property ID? He, he, that will be shared with the, the unique property ID. Yeah, so he'll be getting property tax bills from there. He can, he'll come to know means what is the pro property ID for his property, one thing. If he doesn't know the property ID, because what is happening, maybe old property ID he is having, because most of the time now ULBs are having uh, already having some system in place. And if they are migrating from those system to DJ, so uh, the old property ID is captured in the DJ itself. So they can, the citizen can search by the old property ID. If he doesn't know the even the property ID and the old property ID and his mobile number is updated in the property tax record. So you can search by the mobile number as well. But if doesn't know anything, neither the uh, uh, mobile number, property ID or old property, property ID. In the next release, we are giving a search by uh, owner name and owner number as well. Okay. So, so that will come in the next release. So you can search by owner name, by his name or by the owner number. That is, I think, most familiar things to the citizen. Okay. Hope that answers your question, uh, Emmanuel. Yeah. So then I'll submit here. And this is kind of without login. Citizen need not to log into the system. I think. I think because of limited now, so the session got it. Okay, so now we'll log in into the system so that we can avail other services as well. So I can see my bills. Now it is without login, means if I, it is within login. So within login, I'll, I'll be getting only the properties which are linked with my mobile number. Okay, so because I have logged in through a mobile number. So all the properties which are linked with those mobile number will, or those bills only will be getting here. So if you see, we are getting here all the properties which are linked with this mobile number. Okay, so I can initiate from here as well. The pro payment of uh, uh, property tax and the full uh, the flow is going to be remain same what we have demonstrated just now then we have my properties so this will list all the properties here if you see okay so here we can see means for the status address whether it is in flow or active and if you click on view detail it will show you the complete property tax detail, property details. And uh, uh, owner of the property can uh, apply for update property. So we'll not go into update as of now. We'll go back. Then we have my applications. So it will go. Before you move ahead uh, nearby, uh, this is again by Mr. Emmanuel Olotu. Uh, we are using phone number as an unique identifier, right? Uh, but the question is, is there any possibility of using maybe a national ID or any other uh, unique identifier other, other than a mobile number? Or maybe even having a username and password for people to log in and search? Okay, so as of now, we have mobile number as a user username itself. It means 
all the users are created and their user name is allotted is a mobile number. Okay. So we are uh, we are not giving a kind of separate username other than mobile number. Mm -hmm. So with the mobile number only a user can be identified. Okay, and it's not customizable. I I don't know. It's not customizable. Okay. Okay. Another question before we move ahead: Does the system also do property tax billing? Yes. Yes. So from where my bills. This concept has come. So we have a kind of uh, sub module of property tax and other other module other uh, sub module of other modules as well like water and seaways, wherever a bill is generated. So we that is called bill bill genie. So there uh, the bill of properties and the other uh, like water and seaways charges are generated and then allowed to download those bills in the form of PDF. Mm -hmm. So then uh, means kind of merge and download. So maybe if, if you have selected a locality and asked to merge and download all those localities will, or maybe the, in that localities, some thousand properties are there. So one PDF of thousand property will get downloaded from the system. And then uh, means you will be employee who is responsible for distribution of bill can download the PDF, take the printout, and then uh, means then further proceed for the distribution of those bills. So billing is there uh, it, along with billing, bill, bill PDF and printing of bill PDF. Okay, fine, perfect. I think there's another question which is popped up in by Mr. Akhil Varma. Uh, yeah. What is the technology platform for the mobile app? which is used for building this mobile app? So uh, it is basically, it is a, <coughs> uh, uh, if you see it is a, uh, it is not an Android or kind of iOS. It is JS basically, React JS. It, it is, it has been used. So it is kind of mobile interactive. Okay. can move forward okay so then we my applications are there so it will list all the applications I mean basically three applications are available as of now in the property types registration of property update property and title transfer of property so we'll go through a flow to create a property So here again, we have seen as we have seen in the previous demonstration of OBBS that the first screen which which presents the information about the uh, documents which are required. Okay. So again, these are configurable and can be configured based on the need of the state and the ULB. Okay. So if it is common across all the ULB, so it will be common otherwise. I will move next from here. <coughs> Uh, it starts collecting the information about the property. So whether this property is residential property, if yes, then we click on yes, move next. It's a simple flow kind of question answer. Then what is the type of property in that case? So type of property, whether it is an independent building, it is a part of flat. The part of flat means it, whether it is a, uh, means a, a, a flat in an apartment. I are whether it is a vacant land. Suppose, suppose it is an independent building, we'll not be able to cover all the use cases. We'll go through a single case only. The number of floors, so whether the, the property is having two floor or ground floor only. Okay, so suppose the property is having ground floor only. If the property is having basement, suppose it is it has no basement. Then ground floor detail will start from here. What is the plot size? So suppose it is 200. What is the built up area? Again, suppose it is 200. It is this floor self-occupied? Whether it is self-occupied or rented out. So suppose it is self-occupied because in some cases to calculate the property tax, the rule is different for the self-occupied building and for the printed out building. So 
So that's why this this information is captured. Is any part of floor is unoccupied? No. What is your? Uh, you can mean select the location from the uh, Google uh, map, or you can skip it and continue. I'm going to skip it and continue again. You can enter the pin code. So, if pin code is not known to the citizen or applicant, again he can skip and continue. Then he has to select the locality. If pin code is selected, then these automatically this will come uh, selected. Suppose city is selected, and then the locality is what is the street name? Suppose I am giving it is and what is the house number? And then landmark, if any, if it is known, otherwise can be skipped. And then what is the address book? So these are the documents which can be provided as an address book. I'm, I'm selecting anyone on random, choosing a file to upload from the system. Then move next. So here, uh, this in this screen will provide the ownership detail. So in ownership detail, Basically, we have whether uh, that that uh, owner is an uh, institute. So, in institute also, whether it is a private institute or a government institute, uh, it is an individual owner, like single multiple owners. So, suppose I am selecting a single owner and the name. Gender, the mobile number. and the guardian name. And then we go next. Then whether that owner is of any special category, suppose below poverty line, different personal. So based on these special categories in few cases, in few states, basically they are giving a type of tax exemption. If it is not given, then also it is useful for the information. And these values can be configured. Means this, these values can be, can be means new value can be added or can be removed. These existing values can be removed. So based on the requirements, these values can be configured. So I'm selecting not applicable, no categories applicable here. We'll, know, we'll move next. If category is applicable in that case, uh, in the document section, we have to attach the document related to that category. Suppose freedom fighter, so the proof of the freedom fighter to be attached. And then the property address, the, the owner's address is same as the property address, means say owner is living in that property, he's not somewhere outside. And then the proof of identity. So here we can see the a summary of uh, all the detail which I have filled. And if any change is needed, then those details can be changed after reviewing the complete form. Once it is reviewed, we'll fill the declaration, we'll accept the declaration and we'll submit. Something else. Okay. This was from the citizen side. Will We'll demonstrate the same thing from the employee side as well.
So I have logged in as a counter employee here. Okay, so uh, on the counter employee, I, I can see already I have created application for the sake of time. So what I can do, I can see uh, here means the application which has come. So I can search application and view here. Suppose I'm searching application by My, I can search an application by mobile number, by property ID, and by the application. So the application which is created by the citizen because it's already created will go to the document verifier. So now I'll log, I will log out from here. I will log in as a document verifier. So we this uh, we have this employee uh, inbox which is uh, same to all all the modules and we the same thing we have seen for uh, OPPS as well. So here we can search a application by application number, unique property, IDI, mobile number, and here we have, on the left hand side we have the filters. So like the applications are particularly assigned to me are assigned to all with the role document verifier employees having okay and then by the locality also we can search and then the application type whether the application is for the new property or property registry transfer of ownership or update property so suppose i'm searching a application by mobile number okay so here we can see the application created click on this will then we'll get the application detail here. And we can take action. So uh, the actions which are available kind of verify, send back to the citizen and reject. So we feel that application is, and these actions are configurable. Okay, so uh, that verify and forward will forward the application to the next level send back to to the citizen will send back this application to the citizen reject will can reject the application and then further no action can be taken on that application so suppose i'm verifying and forwarding it to the next level so if you are selecting a uh, suppose it has to go now to field inspector if you are select, selecting a username from here it will get assigned to that particular user if you are not selecting anything then it will get assigned to the uh, basically it will be available to all the uh, employees which are of the role field inspector okay so suppose i am not assigning to anybody i can leave my comments here if i have something to be attached i can attach here or otherwise we'll click on verify and the application verify successfully. So this application will now will get in the uh, next user's inbox. So I have logged in as a uh, field inspector. I can search application here. So the application which I have just just have forwarded from the document verifier, I can see here. We'll click on the application. We'll see the detail. And again, we can take action. And here we can see the timeline as well. Means when that application was created, and when it got with document verified, then we'll take action to forward to the next level. So again, I can select a prover. If I'm selecting an employee here, so it will get assigned to that particular. Otherwise, it will be available to all the uh, employees who which are have the role of approving this application. And then I can leave my comments here. Or attach a file uh, to this uh, application and then you can forward to next level. 
So it got now forwarded to the document verifier. Uh, sorry, approver. So I have logged in as a document approver, uh, application approver. Can go to the property tax inbox. Can search that application. And take the X and they can reject that approve. So I'm supposed I'm approving this application. So now we have that application approved. Okay. And what next we'll do? I will assess this property. So we'll log in as a Uh, content employee. So, what we'll do, we'll search that property. We can see this property which I, which just now I have approved. We'll assess this property. So we'll get an option to assess the property and it will generate the demand for the financial year which I am selecting from here. So here it will, it will show the breakup of uh, the demand. Suppose property tax 3000, then any exemption is there, IRS, cancer says 150 rupees. If any rebate is there, the penalty 600 because it is already time now to levy the penalty interest. And then, then we have uh, the total amount due is 3,750 rupees. We'll click on assess property. And from here onwards, we can go for a payment. So if suppose employee wants to proceed for a payment, he'll click on proceed. He'll get the bill details once again on the collection screen. So again, he can make a full payment or partial payment. Suppose in this case, I'm making a full payment. Here is the property ID, I'm making a full payment. And the mode, mode of the payment is collect, collect, uh, selected cash. Okay, so now um, the receipt has, has been generated and uh, the receipt can be downloaded from here. Okay, I'll go back, uh, the payment is done. So I'll go back to, now again, I'll go back. This, the screen will again be such a property here. The same property. Let's certify. And then we'll get so now total due is zero because already the amount is collected. Want to see the detail? We can see detail from here and then take a X. So suppose we want to update a property. I want to transfer the ownership. Okay. Uh, again, further want to assess a property for the previous year. So again, the property can be assessed for the previous years. Our application for the transfer of ownership can be initiated from here. So suppose I initiate a uh, applica application for the transfer of ownership. So the documents which are required will be shown here. Then the existing owner's detail will be displayed on the top of the application. 
and then the transfer detail is captured here. Suppose again, the individual single owner, the name is So email and correspondence address is so is the mutation is pending in code. If yes, then detail to be uh, detail of the code to be entered here. If it is no, then it is non mandatory. Is the property of uh, are the part of the property under state central government acquisition? If yes, then detail to be entered as yes, we can. Leave it. Then the registration detail. The registration detail means whether this property is getting transferred uh, through a sale deed or gift deed or patta certificate, registered bill deed. So these are the options which are configurable. Okay, partition deed, court decree, property auction, succession or their certificate, family settlement. All these options are there. A correction in the name also it is there. Think the correction in name, if anything by mistake, clerical mistake, if anything wrong got updated, so it can be corrected by the union. Okay, so these are the options which are available. Suppose it is to a sale date, then what is the market value of the sale date? Suppose it is 10 lakhs. What is the registration document number? What registration document value again? Suppose it is same. What is the registration document issue date? So suppose it was on first of January, and we'll attach the required document here. And then we'll submit the application. And what do we do, guys?
Okay, so we'll demonstrate the edit. Okay, so what we can edit here. So uh, we can edit the street name and the door number. Okay, and then the assessment region of the problem. Suppose it is residential, and we want to make it uh, non residential so it can be changed. Even the property type can be changed, and the, uh, the area, lot area also can be changed. And then the uh, floor also, the floor detail also can be changed. Suppose it is ground floor. And if it is commercial, then automatically it will come as a commercial because the entire property itself is commercial, and then the uses type. So. Uh, it is suppose uh, Soru Marmos so based on that we can select here and then we can attach the Required document. And then submit the previous. Yeah, any question, guys? Yeah, Sheikh, I think. Uh, yeah, there are a few questions. Yeah. So one is by Mr. Emmanuel Olotu. How mm -hmm. does Citizen track the transaction status? I'm guessing this is the payment transaction. Is that right, uh, Emmanuel? OK, so okay. until he responds, we'll move to the next question. Mr. Akhil Varma is asking, the type of property is configurable from the back end. I mean, for any further categorization, is it possible? Right. Yep. So uh, all these masters, which are our label here, we can see the type of uh, users type, the property type. Mm -hmm. okay. So all these are configurable. Okay. And uh, uh, even the number of floors also. So basically, these are the standard set of masters, which are with digits provides from. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, from the out of box, okay, out of box disease provides from the uh, system. So these are already standard from the uh, various implementations we collected and configured. But still, these are the configurable, and you can increase or decrease the values. Okay, okay, perfect. Now we'll go back to the first question. It, yes, it is to track the payment uh, transaction. How can that be done? Okay, so to, to track the payment transactions uh, for the citizen, we have uh, kind of my bills, right? So uh, my payments, one more feature is getting added. Okay, so uh, in the next uh, release. So from there, we can see the, see all the payments which are done by a, a property owner. Okay, that's right? the next release, right? Yeah, that is in the next release. And to track the applications, we have search application. Oh, from there, a user can go ahead. Uh, you can go and see that. Okay. Another question is there. Uh, I think this is more of a query. Uh, yeah. After the assessment, will the citizen be notified that he or she can make a payment? Yes. So once a property is assessed, as, as, as I've shown you, mm -hmm. so uh, system uh, sent a notification to the uh, citizen, mm -hmm. 
that your property has been assessed and this much is the tax and with the payment link as well in the SMS itself. Okay. So he he or she can go forward and make a payment online payment. Oh, okay. That's a seamless experience. Then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Those were the questions. You we can continue with the demo. Okay. So, uh, so these are the. Uh, nearby, we lost you. The uh, features we have inside it, uh, uh, property, and then assessment I have already shown. Okay, so, and then the payment of the payment of uh, uh, citizen side, the payment of uh, property tax that also has been shown. Okay, so employee search and collect that uh, that also. So let me show you the employee search and collect. Oh, one second, if yeah. yeah, sure, please. Okay, so I'll select you will be here. Such a property. So here we can see yes, what are all the properties where there is no dues and what are all the properties where, where there is a dues. So from here itself, citizen can select to collect tax and move forward. Okay. And, uh, and then uh, uh, on the uh, connection detail page, you can see uh, the current tax as well as the previous bills as well. So hmm. when previous bill is pending, so that also will come here with the detail. And then he can opt for the payment amount, whether full amount or custom amount. And he can select if it is full amount to be paid. And then uh, mode of payment as well, whether cash, check, or credit or debit card. If uh, if that collection already has already been done by a manual receipt, uh, in few cases at the ground, the tax collector mostly do they. If there is uh, a less network area or not able to means access the system, so they create a manual receipt. So that can be entered here in the SAN the same day uh, with the manual receipt number and issue date. And then we'll click, uh, click on collect payment. So once payment is collected, that uh, receipt number is generated and then receipt can be downloaded from here. User has the option of making either full payment or part payment as well. Yeah, yeah. So both the user from the citizen as well as for the employee, both the option is available to okay. collect in full or in partial payment. Okay. 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 Yeah. So that's it from my side. Uh, I'd say if any other questions are there, we can. This was uh, nice as well. Pretty exhaustive. Uh, so you've imp we've implemented this in a few states as well. So yeah, it's tried and tested. So we're open for questions. We have another uh, 14 more minutes. So if we have questions, please feel to shoot, shoot them. So nearby can answer them for us. Maybe we'll give them a few minutes. Let's see if people have questions or else we can close the uh, session nearby. Sure, sure. Okay, there's one question which is coming up. Uh, Mr. Vikas Singh is asking if advance payment is available. As advance payment, uh, as of now, it is not there, but we are planning to, uh, means it is there in the product roadmap and we are planning to release it, in, maybe in the next release, okay. coming up, coming releases, yeah. Okay. So yes, Mr. Vikas Singh, you will have to follow our uh, release uh, webinars that we keep notifying you about. And yes, maybe you can see them in coming in the coming uh, future update. OK. 
Okay, looks like Friday is taken over. We don't have much questions left then. Okay, just when I say there's a question. Uh, Mr. Mr. Nitesh Parmar, how is the bill calculated? Uh, so do you mean the property tax calculation, Mr. Parmar? Yes, so how is this, I mean, is it configured at the back end, uh, nearby? Yeah, yeah, so uh, the demand calculation or the tax calculation is the part of calculation service. Mm -hmm. And the calculation methods I, I explained you in the, through the P, yes. uh, when we, go, we were going through the PPT. Mm -hmm. So it may vary uh, from state to state. So it is completely customizable. As of now, uh, in the PORA, which, is, uh, which we are demonstrating here, it is Punjab method, which is uh, configured. Okay, so Uttaragand is having separate way of calculating property tax. Maybe other state like Andhra Pradesh or Odisha, they are having their own method of calculating property tax. So there will be, may not be dra drastic variations, but some slight variations will be there. So it is customizable, cal cal calculators, calculation service is customizable, and it is through calculation service, property tax is calculated. Okay, so that option is there then. Super. Yeah. Uh, we have another question by Ms. Akanksha Pandey. Is there an option to get notification that any of my payment is due to payment or is expiring? Some kind of yes. which says your payment is pending or up, approaching due date. Yep. So uh, actually, it, there are two instances where, where when we system suits the notification for the payment. One is when a property is assessed by an employee. And another, another uh, event is when the demand is generated for, for the uh, new financial year. So suppose the financial year is start from 1st of April every year, right? So once the demand is generated for all the properties, that time system suits or the notification that your demand is generated and this is the due date you have to pay along with the payment link, as I told you, uh, to pay through okay. online. The available methods. Okay. I guess that answers the question for Ms. Akanksha Pandey. So, yeah, so it's 15. We'll give it another couple of minutes. Okay. So, yeah, there are not many more questions coming in through. So I'm guessing all of the attendees have our email address. If not, I'm putting it in the chat again uh, for us so that if you have any questions, you can uh, write to me or, and I can have them answered. I will forward it to the team internally, collect the answer and revert with their uh, response. So you can be rest assured that your questions are always answered. Okay, there's another question which is coming through at the moment. Uh, Ms. Akansha yeah. Pandey, is in, yeah, installment payment option? I mean, it's more like custom payment, right, nearby? It's not installment, but more like a custom payment that can be done. Yeah, yeah, so it's a, it's a not installment, it's a partial payment. So I think there is a slight difference between these two partial installments. Installments maintain a uh, amount, equal amount to be paid in installments. Mm -hmm. While in partial payment, you can, means any amount you can choose and pay. Suppose total amount is 1000 to be paid, but in first you are paying uh, 500 and uh, maybe 200 only. And then in the second payment, you are making 800 complete. Okay. Okay, so, so often even means whatever the minimum amount is configured, at least you have to pay that much, but more than that also you can pay. Okay. There is no restrictions on the making the payment. While installment, if it is uh, I mean set to 200 only, so you have to pay 200 for that. Mm -hmm. So installment is not possible, but I can do a custom payment as a benefit. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay, so I think we will call it the end of the session. Thank you, Nirbhai. And thanks to all the attendees uh, for staying with us yesterday, the whole day and today, the whole day as well. So it will be a break for us for the next, uh, for this weekend.
and we look forward to catching up with you folks on the 1st of february uh, which is for the third session which comprises again of two topics uh, look forward to seeing you all there and uh, all have a great weekend stay safe and yes enjoy your weekends thank you all and thank you nirbhai thanks and thank you for attending